Hi everyone and welcome to the final build episode of the Tony Nyhouse 25 inch EDF NAT. Um, so this episode got all sorts of bits and bobs to do to get it finished. Uh, clearly as you can see here, got to finish doing the covering. Um, so I'm going to be getting all the covering done and finished. So we've got to get the radio gear hooked up uh, and set up. We've got to get the surfaces put on and hinged. Um, so ailerons and elevator, um, get all the um, horizontal stab and vertical stab glued in place once we finish the covering, get the control horns set up. Um, and I think that's probably going to be about it. And then just there's just some extra little bits like getting the bottom hatch um, put on properly and making sure that's secure with a magnet. Um, and uh, checking the battery and see if, see. Um, center of gravity and all that sort of stuff. So a lot to do, lots of little bits and bobs. Obviously the main thing is um, is gonna be getting the covering done. Um, that's the biggest job I've got. Um, so if you're interested in uh, watching this, then there's, I've, I'll set a playlist up because I've got seven, I think I've got about seven or eight or so videos of the build. Um, so if you're into that sort of thing and, and bolts, uh, um, then um, you know, have a look at my playlist and, and look at the build videos. And if you haven't subscribed, then please click the subscribe button. Uh, and if you like the video, um, then give me a thumbs up and that really helps me out as well. Helps me build my channel on YouTube. Um, but yeah, it'd be great if you subscribe if you haven't already. Um, so we've got lots to crack on with. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. All right then, so back on the workbench, following on from the previous episode. Um, this episode is the final episode in this series, as I've already said, and this is going to be mainly getting it covered. It's the biggest task I've got, and then once it's covered, I've got all the little bits to finish off. So, for example, I've got to put the hinges, uh, mount mount the surfaces, put the hinges on for the air runs, for example, um, and then hook all the radio gear up, get the control horns, uh, like these little control horns fastened onto the elevator and uh, air runs. So we've got to get all that done. But the first biggest job, as I've said, is to get this whole thing covered. Um, now in the instructions, and I assume Tony's written the instructions, what he's said he's done is he's glued the, the uh, cockpit or canopy in place, or fastened it in place, not quite sure how he's fastened it on to be honest. Uh, and then covered around it to kind of seal the canopy in, which sounds like a nice idea. The problem I've got is I don't think I'm that skilled uh, with doing the covering. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, and it does say you can do either way, it's, it's personal preference really. So I'm going to get it all covered first, and then obviously uh, I'll cover, I will actually cover over this section, but then I'll cut it all back with my knife and just trim around here. I'll get this lined up where I want it and then draw around it again uh, with a sharpie or something and then just cut the film away which will just leave a nice neat area where this uh, olive green is. Um, and I've not detailed the cockpit or anything like that. Uh, I'm not putting pilots in. I'm, I'm, I'm not always a huge fan of pilots personally. Um, but um, I have got something I'm going to do to the uh, to this area um, with the radio gear which should make it look uh, a little bit better than just leaving it completely plain because there's going to be a few flashing lights and bits and bobs in there so should look quite quite good from that side of things um, and what I've done with the getting it covered is that I actually spent about half an hour or so just sort of staring at it um, last night and just trying to figure out how I'm going to cover it because um, it's one of those things where you need to plan it out and decide which bits you're going to do because um, ideally with covering you always kind of want to do the underside first and then lap the top around it if that makes sense. So, what I did was, I've, let's take that little servo out because it's falling out that one. Um, I've actually numbered the areas, which you probably won't really see um, on the camera, but I've just done it with a pencil. And that's the order I've decided I'm gonna do it in. So, I've got this bottom front section here, this is number one, so I'm gonna cover this first. And then also this back section here is going to be number one. So that's going to be covered first. And then number two, I've got th this section here. So it's the sort of bottom of the side pods going back. 
um, around this area here and then coming up to oh actually now I've, I've put number two as all this in fact along here so basically all the underside and sides of the side pods and I've kind of just put a line here so I'm going to do that bit there just lap it around the back there as well sorry you can't see that can you Give me a second so what I'm talking about is doing these side pods and bringing the covering up to here and then it'll lap around the back there as well and it'll lap around the underside here so that's the second thing I'm going to cover third section there's an upside down three there which, so the third section is I'm going to cover these front side bits so that side there that's going to be what I'm do, going to do third fourth is going to be the underside of the wings so both sides obviously underside of those and then number five top top side of the wings so going along here um, not sure whether to do no I'm just going to do the top side of the the wings so it's probably going to come I'll bring the covering up to this kind of edge here and probably do the top of this section maybe but I not actually no I think I'll literally just do the wings and then the final section which is piece six is going to be this whole top section that I'm going to try and do so I'm going to try and do this as one piece blending all these side pod elements into it the front of the intakes here top edge obviously all this right down to the nose and what I'm probably going to do with that with it being quite a big sheet and a com you know it's got some complex shapes it's got the turtle deck in there and some fillet pieces for the fin I'm going to put this put it over tack it into place in various areas make sure it's fairly tight and then I'm going to get the heat gun on it um, my film heat gun and uh, go over it with the heat gun to try and get it to shrink over all these areas that's the plan anyway if it doesn't work out we're going to have to you know take it off um, and maybe do this in a few more pieces but I'm hoping to get all this done as one piece and then that will overlap nicely over the wings and that sort of thing so hopefully it should look all right so I'm going to crack on with that I'm not going to film it because it's just going to take a long time um, but I will show you I'll come back when I've done each um, sort of or a couple of the sections just to show you how I'm getting on with the progress and obviously once I've finished it we'll uh, we'll have another chat so leave that with me and I'll get cracking okay just a quick update to show you where I'm at with the covering excuse this cable that's in the way here that's connected to my iron because I am in the process of doing some covering right now but that is where I'm at so I've done the whole of the underside both wings and I've done this front nose section here as well uh, I was going to try and do that as a whole piece but I thought actually it makes more sense just to to get this piece laid on here as well and I've left it sort of loose around here because I'm going to cut that away when I got the canopy on and same here with these side bits this is all going to be cut away when we've finished it and got the canopy on but yeah I'm really pleased with the way this is turning out <coughs> excuse me I've got a bit of a sort of cold at the minute so voice keeps going but um, I'm really chuffed with the film the film's going on really nice really sort of impressed with this Jay Perkins stuff I've also heard seen a couple of ironically I've, I've, I've just watched some new YouTube videos where people are doing some covering um, I guess I don't know I don't know why they've decided to do their covering whether it's a time of year or something but um, it was quite interesting to see and people starting to use the Ripmax film which is one that you can get here in the UK which is uh, is even better value actually than the, the Jay Perkins one and apparently that's meant to be very good as well the only thing I've found with the Jay Perkins film is that um, if you put two pieces of film on top of each other, which obviously you want to try and avoid wherever possible anyway, if you heat it up a bit too much, you get a, the glue comes out off the back of the film. Uh, so this white glue comes out and leaves. You 
can't really see it. I've only got it in a couple of places, um, sort of along here. I don't even think you're going to see it, to be honest. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's very minor. Um, so that was the only thing I was thinking, oh, that's a bit of a shame, but that's obviously what happens when you put the the two bits of film on top of each other and, and the glue melts out underneath. But apparently, I've seen it again off a, it was actually an older video on YouTube, someone just sort of showing you, doing some covering. They were saying if you get cellulose thinners, uh, that um, that white stuff will just come off, the glue will just come off and it will leave you with an almost perfect uh, seam. So I haven't tried that yet because I haven't got any to hand, but I need to just get some from the hardware store and, and give that a go. But as I said, it's so minor. Uh, and it's and it's a couple of areas on the bottom. You're never really going to see it, so we'll see how I go with that one. <clears throat> so next job is I've got to get the wings done. Um, so do those first, and then once I've done the wings, then it's just a case of putting this piece on along here, which is just going to be a little bit tricky because it's got to be go across all these. So this all these profiles here. So there's the turtle deck, and then there's this upper upper sort of fuselage section. Uh, you know, so there's there's a few uh, ridges and things like that we've got to deal with, but we'll see how we go. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that all as one piece, and it'll look nice and neat. Um, so I'm going to crack on with that and uh, show you what it looks like when I finish. Right then, so this is where I've got to more or less got it all covered, as you can see, apart from this top deck here. Uh, so just back of the uh, where the canopy is going. So we've got this top sort of this turtle deck here and then this bit here so it's it's probably I've been leaving this bit till last um, I also wanted to do this bit last anyway so I could overlap it um, but also I think it's going to be pretty complicated um, so I've got the let's take the backing off that I've got this piece cut out and I'm hopefully what I want to do is do this in one you know one section um, it's just a case of moulding it round and stretching it round these contours, which is going to be a little bit tricky. Um, but I thought I'd uh, film this bit on a bit of high speed video so you can see what I'm up to. Um, so you just put the light on so you can see a bit better. Um, yeah, so it's not easy to film because I, I need to, you know, lift it up towards me and stuff like that sometimes. So it, apologies if it goes off camera every now and again. But yeah, so here goes, so uh, wish me luck. Well, the covering is done, and let me tell you that was that was a uh, a bit of a mission. So, as I've said lots of times, probably already on this episode, that I haven't done any covering for probably about twenty years or so, possibly longer. Um, and the wings were nice and easy, and and you know things like the. Um, horizontal stabs and that sort of stuff but the fuselage was a bit of a challenge because it's got these you know these contours and shapes in it uh, and because the wings are already on the fuselage as well that adds an extra challenge so in hindsight it's probably not the best model to have a go at covering when you've not you know you're basically an amateur and haven't done it for a long time like I have but I am actually pretty pleased with the way it's turned out um, close-up inspection you know it, there's plenty of room for improvement but i think you know certainly like on the camera for example you'll see that it looks pretty nice especially when it's got all the decals stuck to it um, i've cut the slots out for the vertical stab and the horizontal stabs 
Uh, I've also marked on here, so it looks a bit rough around here at the minute, but that's because a lot of this cover in here is going to be cut away. Um, so I've marked with a Sharpie basically where the canopy is going to sit. Um, so I've got to cut that uh, film away there and then just touch it up in case it pulls away some of the, uh, the paint that I've put on. Um, that's fine if it does that. And then what I'm going to do, once I've fastened the canopy on, um, or indeed I might use this to fasten the canopy on, and that is I've got some black uh, trim tape to put around here, so that will create a nice seal around the canopy. Um, so I might, as I say, use that actually to fasten it on rather than try and glue it on or anything like that. But before I actually put the canopy on, there is uh, I, need, I want to put some electronics in here. Um, so basically what I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, is put one of these OHD co-pilot systems in um, purely really so it's got the launch facility which is ideal for what's well, designed for hand launching and also with it being a small model it's got the return to home feature as well so if I if I lose it or lose the orientation or whatever I can flick the return to home on and hopefully get it back um, but that's gonna the main control board and the little GPS receiver are gonna sit on here and they've both got sort of flashy LED lights on so I actually think they'll look quite good um, underneath the, the canopy there. So that's that's my plan for that. Um, other thing I've done just now is I've got this bottom hatch sorted. So I've glued some magnets in here. Um, so just recess those into the hatch and done the same there on the fuselage as well. And that is a real, oh, and I've just um, fastened a little ply lip to the front of it there and that that's a real nice very satisfying uh, click there there's no way that's gonna that's gonna come off that's absolutely solid I've just put a little bit of clear tape on here just to give me some sort of a tab to pull it open because it is really uh, nice and tight so that's gone on really well feels like something that you would actually uh, you know buy um, if you'd bought the model so quite pleased with that um, so Next job for this episode is going to be, so the so next thing I'm going to do now, I think, is get the elevator servo uh, installed, um, get the horizontal stabs put on, need to get the elevators hinged and actually fastened on to the horizontal stabs so we can get all that connected up, get the control horn fastened on and all that sort of stuff. I want to do all that before I put the vertical stabiliser in because I'm probably going to have to turn it upside down and things like that. So I thought I'd get that done first so I don't go and knock it off whilst I'm uh, fettling around with it. So, one of these little servos, as I've shown you already, the little Emacs. Uh, what are these? ES9052 metal geared and digital as well. So. Quite nice really for saying how small they are, they're only 6 gram, probably the smallest servos I've, I've used actually, um, but they're still metal geared and digital which is, which is good. So we've got to get that mounted in here, so I've already got the rails in there, which I did in a previous episode, so it's a fairly straightforward task of just feeding this in, it's quite a nice snug fit as well. Okay, so the elevator servo's just gone in there nicely, so all I've got to do now is uh, I'll, I'll put it in the middle. Um, there's no need to have it off offset or anything like that. Obviously, I need to trim these snakes down uh, a little bit as well. Um, but I just need to get my uh, little pin vise, drill a couple of holes in those plywood bearers, uh, and then we'll, um, we'll get that fastened into position. So we'll get my, whoops, trusty pin vise. Probably one like that I think will be ideal for this. Let's see how we go. I might need to get the electric out actually because it is quite thick plywood. We'll get some meat on it. It's better. <laughs> okay, nice, that's solid. Good, okay, um, let's put these bits back in the box. Right then, so following on from that last clip, um, so I've got the elevator servo mounted as I showed you, 
Um, so what I've decided to do next is I've got to work up this end now and get the um, horizontal stabilizer glued in place um, before I can um, connect the control horns up etc. But what I thought I would do <clears throat> before I get that glued in place is actually get it hinged because I just think it will be easier to do it um, off the plane whilst rather than trying to hinge it once I've glued it on. So um, these are the, this is one side here uh, and then I've got the other one here which hopefully they will line up and they do. So that goes like that. I'll just move this out of the way because I don't need that for now. So um, what I've got to hinge it with in my pile of bits and bobs is some of these. Um, so these are just the little CA hinges that have got like the flock on them um, to give them a bit of a coating. Um, they, these actually um, work really well. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't use these on like a 500 pound model or something like that, but uh, something like this, absolutely perfect. You just put them in with CA and uh, the CA really wicks into them nicely. And obviously to use those, uh, I'm gonna put two on each side because there's only little uh, surfaces, um, but I need to cut the slots in. So what I've, I bought one of these the other day, which is the Dubro hinge slotter. And the main reason really I, I bought this, I remember having one of these years ago, um, but what I found with it is the actual tool that they give you, <coughs> which is this thing here. They might have changed it a little bit, but it's really thick, I find. So it ends up putting like a massive um, slot in the bolsa. Um, and it's, it's often like, you know, too big almost for the uh, for the hinge. Um, but the, the, the great thing about it is, is, it, is you use it like this, um, and this just really helps you get the center point. So that's the main thing I'm gonna use it for. So you put it on here like this, sort of clamp it on like that. Uh, it's a little bit fiddly. And then I'm gonna just get my um, knife in there and just mark, basically just put a mark there and that will be, should be um, the center basically of the uh, of this which will be uh, which will be perfect so it's it's worthwhile getting it just just for that alone really just so you can easily find the center of your surface and it does also come with an adapter like that one uh, so it will do holes as well so if you're using robot hinges or something like that you can use that so so that's why I decided to get one again so I think really fairly straightforward um, we just need to mark out, measure where we're going to put the hinges. So, so I'm going to have two hinges. So I'll mark that off. Um, so obviously we want the slots in the same place on both the um, control surface and the horizontal stab. Um, so I'll get that marked out. Use this as I've just shown you. And then uh, once I've done that, I'll show you what it looks like before I actually put the hinge in. Right, so I've got these slots cut uh, and I've got the hinges in there. I've not CA'd these in yet, um, so I'll just get that done now. So they are in about halfway, which is good. And then we'll just get some of this, the real thin stuff, and then just wick that into the slot there. A little bit too much on there and already they are pretty much solid so that's good and then now I've got those glued in what I can do now is and I think what I'm going to do for this is I think I'm going to need a bit of a more accurate uh, tip for the end of my CA bottle um, so I'll just cut the end of this off there I should do and then we'll put that on the top. Okay, and now I can offer this one up here. And 
did cut the slot slightly wider um, so I can adjust this, get it into the right position. So I would say that's probably about right there. So I've just got like a one mil gap or something like that running along there, which is good. Okay, so that looks good. So what we'll do now is very carefully make sure that's definitely even. I will wick some of this down into here. We should find that's got that already. It's absolutely solid. And then give it a bit of a wiggle. It will be obviously a little bit tight because the CA soaks into the hinge and stiffens it up. But once you've wiggled it a few times, it's fine. I mean, that's, that's no problem there like that. And I might find um, the next time I come back to this as well, it's, it's gone off even more. But you, sometimes you hear it crack a little bit when you... Um, when you move it and then once you, once you hear that crack you know that it's nice and free but anyway that's gone in nicely there and um, that's absolutely solid so that's all good so what I'll do is I'll get the other one done uh, and then I will show you the next step which is going to be um, basically getting these mounted um, well getting these glued into the fuselage so uh, that's what we'll have a look at next all right then so <clears throat> we are back in the workshop from that last clip. It's been quite a few, well in fact I think it's been about a week actually since I last came in here. Um, but I've been doing a few little bits. Um, I don't want to make this, the last few episodes have been sort of 45 minutes. Um, this one's probably going to be a little while but I don't want it to go on for hours and hours so I have been cracking on with a few bits. So I've pretty much finished the covering now uh, and you can see that I have the uh, horizontal stabs glued in place. So just CA those in and they're nice and strong. And they're a good snug fit. Um, I've also trimmed around here as well, um, ready for the canopy to go on. So that's all done. Uh, I'm not gonna put the fin on just yet because um, I've still got a fair bit of sort of tinkering about to do with it, hooking up all the control surfaces and everything. And I figured with the fin on, it's just gonna be more difficult to, to work with, um, you know, when I turn it upside down and that sort of thing. Um, I've also decided that I'm actually going to take the covering off this um, and I'm going to, I've ordered some black um, covering because I've seen online and I'll just quickly throw a picture up now. Um, there's lots of gnats that are in yellow but there's a couple of photos knocking around of the, uh, there's, there's one scheme where the fin is actually black and I th believe from what I've read that that was the, like the squadron leader's plane. Um, and I think it looks a lot, yeah, I really like it. I think it looks pretty cool with the black fin. Um, so I've decided to order some black trim. Uh, I need some, uh, sorry, some black covering. I need some anyway for a, um, a future project I want to get done. Um, so I'm going to recover this in black. And I think it will just help this stand out in the sky more as well with having a black fin rather than it all being yellow. So I'm really quite looking forward to doing that. I think it's going to look a little bit different to the other models that I've seen of this so uh, that should be good. Uh, so what we're doing now, just turn it over, is I am getting the elevator hooked up or elevators because there's one on each side. Um, so what I've done is I've mounted the servo which I think you've already seen me do that uh, and I've just attached this ball link to it and um, threaded this snake through here uh, which has got a threaded rod on the end and so I've used these uh, ball links so that's gone in there quite nice um, and then I've got these control horns from Slec to put on so these are uh, I think these are mini or small control horns they call them Slec do um, so yeah they're, they're quite a nice size so I've got to put those on the back I think I'm going to kind of put them, the problem I've got is uh, I've probably made the snakes come out a little bit too wide, um, although they do bend in quite easily, um, but I don't want to put too much resistance. Um, obviously I've got to cut these down as well, um, but I don't want to cut them too far down. Um, so I think I'm going to put the, well let me just show you, let me just open a pack of these. So 
So I'm thinking to get the control horn. Oops, you can't see that. Thinking to get to the control horn mounted about there, something like that. So I don't know, about a quarter of the way along the elevator. Obviously, same on both sides. Um, and I think that should allow me to get that to sort of bend round, especially once it's cut back a bit. So that, that's what I'm going to do. So I've got to get these mounted. Um, which is obviously fairly straightforward because they're small, they've only got two holes. So I just drill the two holes in those and put the plate on the other side. So I'll get that done shortly. Um, and get the snakes cut back. So get those cut back to about here, something like that. And then for this setup here, um, what I'm going to do is... So I've got that one attached already which goes back to this one, um, which goes back to this side here. Because the snakes, they actually cross over inside the airframe. So this um, left hand um, snake actually operates the right hand or whatever, it, or vice versa, I can't quite remember. Um, but then obviously I've got the other side to do. And rather than putting two servos in, um, and this is what it says in the plans as well, um, I'm going to join these together so I've got to cut this snake back a bit to reveal the inner and then I'm just going to attach the inner to this inner. Not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. Um, I think I'm probably going to use something like a, a really thin cable tie and then some epoxy or something like that to secure it all in place. Um, so yeah, just got to have a play around with that just to figure out what's going to work best. Um, and then obviously get them set up at the back here so they're both um, level. The only other thing I'm slightly concerned about is the this, these aren't the because I've used those CA hinges they're not like fully hinged hinges um, they are a little bit tight I mean they're not that tight I can move it with my little finger like that um, obviously there is a bit of resistance there because it's not just a, like a pin pin hinge or anything like that so just a little bit worried whether that's going to you know it's because it's only a tiny little six gram servo whether it's going to be able to move it or move both of them but I'm sure it'll be okay um, they're metal geared um, so hopefully it will be all right so I'm going to get all those bits done so it's going to take me a little while a lot of fettling around um, obviously got, got, got to get all these lined up get them symmetrical and everything so I get all that done and then we'll switch back uh, when I've got that done. Right then, <coughs> well since our last clip um, I've been on holiday <laughs> so uh, it is taking a little while to get this done. Um, yeah, I've been away to a nice wood cabin in the middle of a forest in Cheshire with a hot tub. All very nice, very relaxing, apart from you know as relaxing as it can be with a five year old little boy running around. Um, so back at it today. Um, and I think in the last clip I was getting all these, uh, the elevator hooked up basically um, and getting these horns mounted. I did make a little bit of a mistake on this one so I, I think I said in the last clip I was going to mount the horn about here um, and I mounted it straight as well which was just, um, should have thought about that before I uh, drilled the holes but uh, it meant that this was just at a stupid angle. Um, so in the end I've, I've mounted the horn at, um, at an angle sort of parallel-ish to these um, the snakes um, and obviously fastened it in with a ball joint there and that has actually worked quite nice and the movement's quite good on that so that's actually better than I thought because I was a little bit worried that this was going to be a bit stiff um, but it's not, it's, it seems to be moving it quite well, um, the servo does. Um, so what I've got to do now is I've got a, so I've got this one snake hooked up here um, and I need to get this one fastened to it basically. Uh, and I did try um, using a, a cable tie just to you know test it um, and, and uh, pulling it really tight but even that just, just slipped off so that was no good. Um, so what I've done is I've bought some fuse wire basically and I'm going to use this 13 amp fuse wire um, which is you know kind of like that thin. I'm going to wrap that round there, tighten it up and then once I've done that and just 
prove that it is going to move it okay because before I do anything permanent I just want to make sure it is all going to work okay and it's going to be able to move and it moves at the same rate as the other one because obviously the last thing I want is them moving at slightly different uh, times because that would turn the elevator into elevons which I don't want um, so once I've done that and it all seems to be working okay I'm then going to uh, leave the wire on but I'll um, cover it with um, epoxy just to really seal it um, seal it up and make it a, a permanent connection um, so that's going to be my next job that I'm going to get stuck into now so I'm just going to get a piece of cable about that long just snip that off I might actually put two two pieces round and my plan is kind of like safety wire you know and that's the idea so I'm going to pull that tight Right, well that's kind of got it in place. It's still not that tight to be honest, so it might not be. I think I might just need to go for it with the uh, epoxy. Um, let's get the servo hooked up to the, uh, my servo tester. Yeah, that's just not working at all. It's just not moving that one, so. Hmm. I'm tempted maybe just to put a little blob of, um, to keep these on just just to um, sort of stop it from coming apart. But I think I might just put a little blob of CA on just to fix it in place. If I trim these down, that's better. Right, let's get a little blob of CA on, see what happens. And then we'll just hit it with some kicker. Right, well that CA's gone off, so. Okay. I think that that is working. I think I might even get rid of that little bit of wire there, that back piece, because that's actually catching. But I'd say that's working nicely. They're moving absolutely spot on symmetrical. Okay, good. Right, well, <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to bring this video to a close. I know I did say at the start that this was the final build video, but I think it's going to go on for ages because I've still got quite a lot to do, actually, because I've got to put the air on servos in, I've got to get the canopy put on, get all my actual radio gear in, receiver, etc., and get the battery in and all that stuff. So I'm going to bring this one to a close here, um, but look out for um, the second part of this final video, if that makes any sense whatsoever, uh, where we'll... Uh, we will finish it off in that video. So um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and um, you know, I hope you're enjoying watching along with this build series. <coughs> and as usual, I really appreciate everyone that watches and everyone that takes the time to comment. Uh, and of course, a massive shout out to everyone that subscribes to the channel. Um, I'm hoping that uh, we can get close to a thousand su subscribers by the end of the year. So if you have made it this far to the end of the video and you're not subscribed, it doesn't cost you a penny to subscribe. It's free um, in YouTube. You just have to have an account, that's all. Um, so help me out by hitting that subscribe button and then you'll, you know, and hit the, the bell button and then you'll be notified for when the next videos come out. Um, so yeah, thanks, thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you soon for the next one.